When we travel abroad, we never want to be tourists. We want to experience what the locals experience. The same applies to Korea. When non-Koreans visit Korea, they are not looking to be treated as tourists, but desire an authentic Korean experience. Our globalist today, Im Hae Min, created a unique app, Create Trip, that has been hugely successful at providing such an experience. Over 1.5 million visitors from 75 countries view this site every month. Im talks to us today about what makes her services so popular and gives us an insider tip or two about what to do in Korea. So, welcome to The Globalist. Thank you. Um, we are very glad that you made the time to come to our show. I've downloaded your app, um, and I've sort of used it, Create Trip. Create yes. Trip. Um, there are a lot of services, tour, you know, tourism services um, about Korea. What makes your app, Create mm -hmm. Trip, mm -hmm. so special? Mm -hmm. Well, Create Trip stands out because we solely focus on providing trending activities to foreigners. It means that we provide very daily, relatable, mm. and leisurely activities, such as going to a photo studio mm. with a friend to capture memories, or visiting a mm. newly opened new bakery cafe, mm -hmm. or visiting a skincare mm. clinic to get simple treatments. So mm. it's basically more like what a typical Korean would do on a weekend. Okay, so it is to sort of do what a normal Korean would do for fun, I guess. Right, you know, right. not for work, but right. for fun. Right. Um, but normally, isn't when you go and visit a place for the first time, mm -hmm. aren't there normal things you have to do, like visit the palace, you <laughs> know, take a walk on Cheong mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. some of the normal things that mm -hmm. people would do. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what a visit to a, a, a city entails? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, well, a few tourists really, actually really do that oh. when they travel Seoul, but in reality, Tourists come to Korea to enjoy its latest trends. Hmm. So they are really into what Koreans would normally do hmm. when they have free times or something like that. So they're all into all those kind of this so-called K-culture. Hmm. So that's why they choose to see all those activities authentic. Oh. when it comes to traveling Korea. Oh. Mm -hmm. So basically because of the Hallyu, the K-culture right. uh, popularity, when, when people come to Korea, they look for that K-culture experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But isn't that a very specific market? I mean, is that the kind of tourists that come to Korea? Do we not have a more general tourist population? Yeah, definitely we, Korea, mm. do have a variety of um, tourists visiting Korea. But the majority of tourists mm. are women in their 20s to 40s. Oh. And they are highly affected by K-dramas and TV shows, things like that. Mm. So what they really want to do in Korea is to do what Koreans would normally do. Of course, there are a few people mm. who want to experience more of traditional part of Korea as well. But um, the reality is that the position, the image of Korea is a country where everything changes really fast and everything is trendy. So, I mean, locality of Korea represents oh. the global trend, oh. actually. So mm -hmm. this is why foreigners would visit Korea at this very moment. Mm -hmm. So it's a 20 to 40 um, group of young women mm -hmm. who already know Korean culture. 
yes. who are expecting a certain type of experience mm -hmm. in Korea? At this moment, yes. <laughs> so how do you cater? I mean, that's a very specific, yeah, and, and they already have a concept of what they want. Right. Um, is it very difficult to, to live up to their expectation? It is not that hard, but uh -huh. the trend is ever changing in Korea. The crucial part to live up um, to their expectations is to keep up with the trends. Mm. So, uh, for example, the trending areas in Seoul are also changing. Well, mm. uh, during the COVID-19, it was definitely Uljiro area, mm -hmm. and then now it's Songsu and Hannam. Yeah. So it's like super fast changing. So it is foreigners visiting Korea's expectations mm. to enjoy Korea as it is the most trendy type. Right. How do your team members keep up with the trends? Yeah, so 30% uh, of our employees are um, so-called foreigners from Koreans' perspective, and they have been living in Korea for a long time. Mm. And they know about Korean culture mm. and their own culture as well. Mm -hmm. So they are always searching for what foreigners would want to enjoy mm. when they visit Korea on mm. social media channels and etc. Mm -mm. And they also try to go about every single uh, trendy place in Korea mm. by themselves. Well, so, so introduce us to some of these mm -hmm. unique experiences mm -hmm. that the users would want to experience in mm -hmm. Korea. One of our key offerings that is really famous at this moment is personal color consulting. Personal color consulting. <laughs> Okay, we are here at Abdujong Rodeo. Why are we here today? <laughs> today, I want to get my personal color analysis yeah. done. I checked it and I use Creative app for reservation. There are multiple options here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I choose this place. Mm -hmm. Today, we're going here. Okay, should we head over? Yeah, let's okay. go. Is Korea on the cutting edge? I mean, is, is Korea the place to go for this yes. color consulting? Yes, there is certain license for it as well. In Korea? Yes. And then some of personal color consulting um, brands also do offer um, translation service. So it's really convenient for foreigners to enjoy. You are spring light, so warm pastel is yours. Mm -hmm. When you go shopping and you don't know if it's cool or warm, you can just pick pastel, so that's why I draw this one. But strong colors or too dark colors, like navy, mm -hmm. I don't recommend for you. Okay. So for traveler visiting Korea, it is very affordable because once you get to know your own color and you get to know how to wear makeup on with all those colors. You can use the result of consultation for a lifetime. Okay, so mm -hmm. color consultation is one. Are there certain trends that have not been popular, that are very trendy in Korea, but have not been popular to uh, overseas travelers? Uh -huh. From my team's observation, um, it has been a very specific trend that foreigners understand Korean trends really well because thanks to the social media channel and everything, so they do follow um, celebrities from Korea oh. and they naturally get to know what they do on weekend. So if there is a trend in Korea, like a week later, the foreign people will know if they're interested in Korean culture hmm. because of the K-drama and social media channels and everything. Wow. So then describe the, 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 the type of people that, that are composed of uh, 1.7 million yes. viewers. Yes, people, people, people that make, use right. yeah. your app. Uh, yeah, sorry. So mm -hmm. what kind of people? Categorize them if you can. 50% mm -hmm. of our customers are from Chinese-speaking countries in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, they are aware of what's trending in Korea, obviously, mm -hmm. because they watch K-drama and TV shows pretty much every day. Mm. And some of them can also 
um, speaking Korean because I learned it. Okay. And uh, ninety percent of our customers are women. Okay. They want to. Um, we are like Korean people, and they want to eat things that Korean celebrities would eat in in their life. So they want to really imitate oh. the Korean lifestyle, in essence. Wow. Mm -hmm. So they want to be here and, and, and really live like a Korean. Right. It's like once a, I mean, how often? Um, what is also the characteristics of their travels? Well, it actually depends on nationality, but when it comes to Japan, they visit Korea like for three or four days with the weekend. Mm -hmm. And then they leave and they, then they come back in half a year or something like that because it's quite near. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to Taiwan and other Chinese speaking countries, the interval is like a year, but they stay like uh, four or five days in a row. They wouldn't actually ca categorize it Korean trends, okay. but they want to enjoy the latest global trends in Asia. <laughs> so that's Aww. why they come to Korea. And every year this changes? Yes, the trends are ever changing. So before the pandemic, uh, what tourists wanted was quite different. It was mm. like um, trying out um, traditional hanbok clothes in Gyeongbokgung area or things like that. Well, still majority of tourists are doing that, but now it's more like having um, beauty treatments or having an eye clinic exam in Korea, things like that. So. Mm. The trends are ever changing, and also their taste of foods are ever changing too. Just like um, <laughs> younger Korean, Korean generations. Mm -hmm. I wanna try this. <laughs> Looks so yummy. I'll get black uh, sesame. For the majority of tourists, that they want to experience what's trending in Korea, right? So what's trending in Korea is obviously something that normal Koreans would do on the weekend. So, and that's very universal. Mm. So that's actually another cafe. I found this one and I thought it looked good. I want to try the salad. So today we did everything that all the like this is what all the like trendy young Korean people are doing. I think it was great. But you know, I've have heard from a lot of people that there's really a, not a lot to do here, not a lot to buy except for face masks mm -hmm. and you know. So they 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 seem to be talking about a lack of diversity uh -huh, of okay. experiences uh -huh. and shopping opportunities. Mm -hmm. But is that not true? Or is it because they, didn't, they don't use your app? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, from my perspective, uh, when it comes to shopping, for, for instance, there are plenty of good local shops and trending brands offline. So from our customer's perspective as well, they visit Hongdae to shop, and they also visit Songsu to shop. And they also visit Hanna Maria to shop. So from their perspective, there are plenty of places to shop in Korea, and they're all different. And to try uh, fusion Korean foods. For example, like? Like, uh, if there is a wine bar for famous for younger Korean generations, wines are the same, but the, well, so-called anju, like foods, Okay. Are snacks. different, yes, yeah, snacks, snacks different from other bars in the world. I mean, for exa example, they serve like spicy carbonara pasta, things like that. Spicy at the white carbonara bar. pasta. Yeah, but Koreans wouldn't call it a fusion, but to foreigners, 
It's very special. The trend has been mm -hmm. that, you know, to cater to tourists, mm -hmm. you would want to alter, change Korean food to fit their tastes. But now mm -hmm. you're talking about not doing that. Mm -hmm. You want them to adjust their taste buds to our taste. Yeah, because our taste is ever changing. It's amazing, but, but you also have tried to even make it more local. So mm -hmm. now you have um, introduced a tour mate package? Oh yeah. What, what, is, what is the concept of that package? Okay, so in a situation where tourists visit Korea to enjoy its latest trends, there aren't many tour guides, professional tour guides, that can actually introduce them to the latest trends. Right? So we made this concept of tour mate. It's a professional guide, but it's more like a friend. Uh, it could be a Korean friend. Okay. Uh, it could be a foreign friend who lived in Korea for a long time or things like that to communicate in their own language. Mm. So we developed this concept of tour mate and they even can accompany with you to traditional markets and help you with personal color consulting translations mm. or they can even join you for a cafe visit mm. or they can help you with make reservations for um, famous clinics in Seoul, things like that. So it's like a little different concept from the previous mm -hmm. tour guide, but it's more like a concept of a friend, but it's still a guide. It's not a concierge, it's not like a it's, it, yeah, it sort of it tailors to your specific yes, wants. Yes, yes, and they accompany you. Mm, well, everywhere. anyhow, yeah, yeah. yeah anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> like these kind of, in, in the business that you do, what is the most difficult aspect of it? What, what, what do you find most challenging? The most challenging part is that we cannot control um, global situation that happening oh, okay. like very randomly. For example, if there is a war, mm. the travel between that country to Korea is kind of very limited. But, well, it didn't happen to us yet, but it, it, we cannot control and mm. we cannot expect that to happen. So, mm. well, it, COVID is the same, pretty yeah. much the same thing. So we cannot control the COVID and we had to um, put up with like almost three years to recover from the pandemic. And then that thing is really hard for us to predict and get prepared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The number of travel restrictions against South Korea continues. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention raises alert for travel to South Korea to the highest level. The whole tourism, you know, industry suffered during pandemic. Right. Tell us your experience mm -hmm. about we the pandemic. Were, well, I would say we were quite fortunate that we had learned before that uh, tourists visit Korea. They definitely purchase some Korean products, right? Mm. Skincare yeah. products or beddings, blankets, things like that but when they go back to their home, well, they ran out all those things. So they need a refill. Oh. They need a refill. So they had no, no other place to buy these things that they like so much right. and bought in Korea. Right, so a lot of customers were asking us if we could send things to their home countries. <laughs> so we, we found that fact very fascinating and the pandemic started. And then we decided um, to open e-commerce business because no one was actually um, able to come in and out of Korea, right? That was a very smart move though. Mm -hmm. I mean, that mm -hmm. allowed you to not go out of business, mm -hmm. basically. So um, during the pandemic, mm -hmm. what did people buy? Well, um, believe it or not, people would have bought blankets. Blankets from the traditional market like Pangjang market. Korean blankets? Yes. What is so special about Korean blankets? Um, okay, so... so I'm sorry, I, I'm, no, I no, use no, Korean you're... blankets myself, <laughs> but I don't know if compared to... Uh, 
you know, blankets mm -hmm. from other countries mm -hmm. are so special. So our first market for the e-commerce business was Taiwan because yeah. we are uh, really famous in that market. So we opened a business, but we also knew that there is no winter there and there's no heating system at all. Okay. But with the climate changing really fast, there could be a winter someday during the winter. Winter says it is not obviously winter, but okay. if the temperature goes down a little bit, it's a little bit to Korean people. But when it comes to Taiwanese people, it's like a lot. Mm. So they feel extreme cold. So they need a thick winter blanket. But there's no thick good winter blanket in Taiwan because no one was ever like producing them. Oh, they st they see, are still coming to Gwangjong Market and and buy all those oh. thick blankets. Okay, I was at Gwangjong Market yesterday, yeah, and I saw lot, so many tourists go, and and, and there's so many blankets. Right now, I understand. Mm -hmm. I I thought that was strange. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so that's how you survive pandemic. But you also had a difficulty because relations with China, right, um, and Korea mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. you know plummeted, and and mm -hmm. still the Chinese tourists are not really. Um, back to where it was, where they were right, before. Right. Uh, how mm -hmm. did you deal with the with the Chinese, the mm -hmm. lack of Chinese tourists? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we started in 2016, and then there was a thought right after then. But our main focus was penetrating into mainland China, obviously. But back then, I thought I was really unfortunate <laughs> because we were not doing well in mainland Chinese market, and I was thinking about. Um, quitting the service mm. in the market and there was a part-timer from Taiwan um, in our team and then she told me there is a huge bunch of Taiwanese people who mm. love to come to Korea and then she also told me they speak Chinese of course but there there needs some massage in their wor wordings and text mm. so if we do a little bit more of localization she thought it would be great for us to penetrate into Taiwan market. And then mm -hmm. we looked up the numbers and it was growing really fast, actually. So we decided to give it a try. Yeah. So we kind of managed to escape from that situation mm -hmm. back then. Well, that was a very fortunate move at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. But after the pandemic, because people noticed the lack of you know, mainland Chinese tourists mm -hmm. and they think inbound tourism mm -hmm. has actually dropped. Yeah, what is very intriguing here is that a travelers used to spend about $1,200 per person when they travel Korea okay. before the pandemic. And it's like, it has become um, 1,500 USD now wow. without uh, tourists uh, recovering from the mainland China. Mm. It is also because people are spending more of more in shopping and skincare, things like that. So, and it also because people from so-called Western world from Europe and the United States are coming in. So they tend to spend a lot. Interesting. Mm -hmm. For your, your personal um, future plans for Create Trip mm -hmm. um, and yourself, mm -hmm. what would you like your um, service to evolve into? What are your plans? As to the service, our focus only on uh, introducing what's trending in Korea and is ever changing. So we are mm -hmm. always busy keeping up with that. But as to the market expansion, we want to be the number one travel platform that every single foreigner use mm. uh, when they visit Korea. Mm. So this year, our aim is to take 10% of total inbound travelers using our app. I hear you're, you, you're not a big advertiser or, you know, you, you don't like to do flashy uh, marketing techniques. Mm -hmm. How do you plan to do that? <laughs> well, when, when we penetrate into a certain market, I would call it a mono, monopolization. So we monopolize every single channel for travelers to use when they search for any kind of information about Korea. So we open a very special social media account for foreign travelers uh, to help them to get latest Korea travel information, things like that, like by using TikTok, Instagram, Facebook and everything. So we make them follow our account mm. to get latest trends in Korea. Mm. And then we convert them 
into our own users because once they need to book a very trending activity, it would be us. So mm. in that part, by doing that, we convert the users naturally into our users. Well, um, that's a big market. Yes. That's a big market. I wish you the best of luck mm -hmm. and please come back and visit us um, when you have um, laid your foothold in <laughs> Thank that market. You so much. Thank you for um, coming and visiting us today. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And that's it for me. I will be back next week with another globalist who is putting Korea on the map. Sun Jie, out.